welcome to Six Gun Guitars, Lethal Lessons. This is the Dreadnought series. Um, before I start actually getting into building the body, I think it's important that we talk just a little bit about the mold. Um, making a mold is optional, but if you're going to make more than one guitar, it's really worth the time and effort to get a mold together going, just because it guarantees more repeatable results. The mold is always going to be the same size, the same shape. So when you fill it or when you wrap it, it's always going to be the same size and shape guitar that you're making out of it. Um, it basically guarantees that if you make one guitar that sounds really good, you know, you can, well, not guarantees, but it makes it easier if you do have to make a guitar again, that you can get it pretty darn close to the same size, you can get everything nice and squared up, and it really just helps with the overall making of the guitar. Now, there's two types of molds. There is an inside mold, which looks kind of like this, and violin guys have been using these for years. And this is what they look like, this is one without any ribs around it, and just like the name says, the mold is on the inside. So this is one with a set of ribs on there, and if I let go, these guys have lost a little pressure over the time here. And you can actually slide this guy completely off, and now you've got your set of sides that are all done. And again, this is, this is a violin. Now an inside mold will work on a guitar, um, but it's just not as easy to work with as an outside mold. So that's what I've made for my guitars. And, you know, yeah, if you make one mold, you're stuck with one shape. But if you make a couple molds, you'll have plenty of shapes. And it really doesn't take very much effort or time to make a mold, and they're really not very expensive either. So it's worth it, in my opinion, to make a few. So that's an inside mold. These guys are outside molds. This one is for an orchestra model. It's about 15 inches across the lower bout. And the one in the back is a dreadnought, and it's a 16. And what I'm going to do is just show you the basic workings over a little bit closer over here so that you can kind of see what's going on a little bit better. And I'm going to show you how to make one here. Um, essentially what this is is it's just four pieces of MDF all stacked up. Pieces are stacked up, they're screwed, and they're glued together. You can kind of see the edges here. I've got a little draw clasp up here. That's what holds it together. There's a hinge on the bottom. And the nice thing about it is it's the shape of my guitar. So I can glue I can glue my sides to the inside. I'm sorry, I can clamp my sides to the inside after they're bent, glue in the head and tail blocks, glue on the top and the back, and then all I've got to do is open this little draw hasp and open my mold. And the guitar comes out of it, which is nice. So then you put it back, refasten the hasp, and you're ready to make another guitar. Now, the Dreadnought one was my first, and that one was my second. Dreadnought one is made the same way. They're a little heavy. You know, you can cut off some of the corners and whatnot, but I kept them um, for a reason that I'll explain a little bit later on um, in probably another video. But there's the one for the Dreadnought. Again, four pieces, MDF, and they're glued and screwed together. It's got a little hasp on the top, so you can open it. The hinge on the bottom, so it pivots. But that's everything, and now let me take you over and show you exactly how to make it. Easy procedure, um, especially if you have a router. It's going to be really nice and easy to be able to put a couple of these together. So in order to make one of these molds, what you're going to need is to get a piece of MDF. Um, I recommend three-quarter inch thick MDF or thicker so we don't have to use as many pieces. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that bit of MDF and you're going to cut it down into rectangles. And those rectangles need to be 24 inches tall and about 10 or 11 inches wide. Um, the lower bottom of my guitar is 16 inches, so I only need eight on either side. So I made mine 10 by 24, because the total guitar is about 20-ish, I think 21-ish. So I got plenty of room on the top and bottom, and I got a couple of rooms on, you know, a little bit of inches on the side. So again, mine are 10 by 24. I had to make up eight of them. So what I wound up doing, instead of making eight of them painstakingly one at a time and, and reassembling them, I drew out a shape that I wanted for my guitar. I folded it in half, and I put it on one of the edges of my board. And you can kind of see it here. These are my 10 by 24 inch boards right here. Basically, one half of this guy is my... 10 by 24 inch board. So what I did was I folded my guitar design in half and I laid it right up against here and I traced it out. So that way I've got my side profile down. Now this profile and this profile are a mirror image so it was very very easy to take and use these boards on either side. It really didn't matter. So again I traced it out with the very half line all the way up on the edge of the board. And then I went over to the bandsaw, went over to the bandsaw and I cut out this shape as close as I could to the line without going over the line. And this just on one of the pieces, just one. So I took that piece, and I took a sanding block that had a little bit of a radius to it with some sandpaper on there. And I just slowed and go, and I kind of went on that one piece, and I got the one piece completely smooth, perfectly up to the line, nice easy curves, just the way I liked it. So now I had that one piece. So if you have a router, or if you have a router table, you can knock out the other ones really easy by using a flush cutting bit and using that first one as a template. So what I did was I took my first one, and I laid it up on right even on the next board, and I traced out the pattern. Took the next board on, did the same thing, traced out the pattern. So now I had my one main that I had cut out, and I had seven other blanks that all had that half guitar profile on there. So I took those over to the bandsaw, cut them out as close as you can to the line without going over it, and then you set up your router with a flush cutting bit. And what this looks like, it looks like this. 
It's got a bearing on the bottom, and this thing spins, and it's got the cutters right here. So what you can do is you can take a piece, if you have a router table, you can take your blank that you just roughed out on the bandsaw, put it on the bottom, put your perfect one on top that you spent all the time on, screw them together just temporarily, but make sure they're good and lined up. And then what's going to happen is you set your router depth, so that way this guy, the bearing here, is riding up against the top profile. And the one below it, the rough cut one, is going to be hit by these teeth. So what will happen is you're running that piece through, this thing will effectively duplicate that top piece that you made. So you make the one, rough cut a bunch of other ones and stack one underneath, and then run it across the router with a flush cutting bit, and it'll take the new one, the rough one, and match it to the profile that you created on mold, or on, on the one that we're using as a, as a master, kind of. So after you run all eight of those guys through, just stack them next to each other, four and four, make sure they're nice and square, and then start gluing them up. Now what I did to find is I screwed them together, and I did a little bit of glue in between. So you can see again, it's four pieces here, but what happened is when I put them together, you know, I flattened them open, put them together, laid them down, and made sure this is all square and everything like that before I proceeded. And then I went ahead and screwed them all down, and then I added my draw clasp, and I added my hinge. And again, the nice thing about this is that, we, is that once we bend the sides especially, we're going to be able to lay those guys in here and grab them with clamps all the way around like this. But what it's going to do is it's going to hold it to that shape. It's going to hold it to that shape, and more importantly, it's going to hold your sides at a 90 degrees. You want your sides to be a perfect 90 degrees to your top plate and your back plate. Not only for proportion, you know, but for symmetry, for sound, you know, just for, just for structure. If you have everything at a perfect 90 degrees, when you're calculating things like head stocking or um, neck deflection, when you're calculating things like where your bridge is going to land, all kinds of stuff depends on how well that box is constructed. And the better the box is constructed, the better it's going to sound, too. So my recommendation, if you're going to make more than one guitar, it's really worth the time and effort to make a mold. Because the mold never goes away. You can make as many guitars as you want. Uh, yes, they're all going to be the same size, but it's easy enough to make more molds. So again, just a quick rundown. Make the shape you want, full size on a piece of paper. Trace it out onto one of the pieces, just the half profile. Cut it out, sand it, get it perfect. And then use it with a router and a flush cutting bit to go ahead and duplicate that. Now again, if you have any questions about this, um, you can send me an email at sixgungguitars at gmail.com. I'll do my best to answer it for you. But we're going to work a lot here on the mold on the Dreadnought Project just because we're going to be building it in there pretty much when we build the body. So if you don't have a mold, you know, at least I wanted you guys to have a little bit of perspective on how to make one, how easy it is to make one, and why you need one. So hope you enjoyed it. And I have six gun guitars. This is the Dreadnought series. Um, like I said, keep looking. Um, over the next few weeks, I'm hoping to finish this instrument and hoping to show you how along the way.